Hey, what's up everyone? Koban Romani456 here today, continuing my Let's Play on Sonic Unleashed for the Xbox 360. So, last time we did Empire City Night, and here we are today doing Shamar Day. But uh, today, I have a very special guest with me, so why don't you introduce yourself? Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Johnny, of Some Call Me Johnny. SGB likes to play in Brain Scratch Commentary. He's joining uh, Kobe here for a sh Shamar. Are you ready to Shamar, Kobe? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Gotta get down. <laughs> oh, man, I haven't seen the Shamar hub world since I actually initially played the game. Really, can, now? Yeah, dude, yeah, because if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm revisiting Sonic Unleashed, I'm just, you know, selecting stages, you know, without having, ever the need to go to the hub world, and I haven't seen this since 2008. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, what is it? Just decided to kind of like, this is actually my second time doing the playthrough for Sonic Unleashed. Because, uh, you know, I just kind of wanted to redo it with better quality, but uh, it's a really good game, in my opinion at least. What do you think about this game, though? Uh, kind of split. <laughs> <laughs> kind of split? <laughs> yeah, just like a majority of people that are they're not exactly sure. You know, I love Sonic's levels. I am not too very, I'm not very fond of the Werehog stages, but uh, we'll get more into that as we go along because we actually are doing two stages today, aren't we? Yes, we are going to be doing Arid Sands Day and then Arid Sands Night. So, you ready for this? No, but let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, uh, yeah, so we're going to go to Shamar Day. Um, do you have any personal opinions on this stage at all? Or... Yeah, my least favorite daytime stage. <laughs> I, I agree completely. <laughs> this stage, oh my god. I've never been fond of it at all. I don't know why. It's just well, more accurately, I should say the beginning is my least favorite part in any daytime stage because there's so much crap in the way. You exactly. have to make all of these quick turns. You have to you have to avoid pedestrians because pedestrians just stop you right in your place, and that's not fun. And uh, uh, actually, I'm not. Uh, is Shamar like really jam-packed with multiple pathways in the beginning of the stage? Because I can't see them because there's so much stuff in the way. Yeah, that's the problem. Um, I don't think there really are, but there are many areas around here to where you can uh, get like medals in the beginning, but you have to go completely out of your way and smash boxes and stuff. It's really yeah. annoying. <laughs> but yeah, I completely agree with you. There's too much stuff in the beginning, and then also, because of uh, Sonic's like weird jump in this game, it's like the platforming sections can be a real pain. Uh, well, it doesn't really get it doesn't get too bad with the bombless pits until like in the the late half. But you see, look, look that right there is like where you just ah, uh, yeah. uh, th th this damn structure is in the way. I don't, I don't feel like being Sonic anymore. Wow, and I'm completely failing. <laughs> That's the thing about this stage. I'm usually good with pretty much every other stage in this game except this one. I always seem to get like an E rank on yeah. it. It's weird how that works out because when I first played the game, when I was getting uh, getting used to all the mechanics of this new engine, uh, uh, Adabat was actually my least favorite stage for the time being because it was one it was long and one it was just very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, make that what we will. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, after I became more experienced with that, I noticed that wow, Shamar is really getting in my nerves, <laughs> and uh, that, that's certainly the uh, consensus I hold today. Yeah, it's always that stage that I've just never come to love at all, you know. I used to always think, yeah, Autobot was really, really difficult, but, you know, got better with it. But now, this stage, I've, I've never been able to grasp it at all. Why is this here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the music's nice and all, and the stage looks really awesome. I mean, you can't complain about that, but, you know, it's just... I don't know, the stage design itself, there's always something coming in your way. <laughs> <laughs> this game needed the parkour engine. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why Sonic... Sonic Lost World was developed because nobody likes Shamar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tsugashi Izuka put all of his love and effort into Shamar. Nobody liked it. Like, uh... <laughs> Did he actually work on this game? Though? Uh, Takashi Izuka? I believe... Well, if he, if he... I'm not gonna say he developed in the end, entirely. He was probably a producer. Like he has been for the last few years. Okay, I thought the first game he actually worked on, like, to come back was Sonic 4 Episode 1, so... Well, uh, when he's more than a producer role? Uh... Oh, really? Okay, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, because I think Takashi Izuka's been with the team since Sonic 3. Yeah, I knew uh, that was, like, his first game that he worked on, but I thought he, like, left for a long time or something like that. I don't remember what he, 
what game was the first one he executive pro executive produced. That's a verb now. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. I actually managed to skip that section right there pretty easily. Just do an air boost. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm actually, I, I just minimized the Skype window to do a little research while you're running through the sands and the, uh, uh, the Skype conveniently left the window screen. <laughs> so I can still see what you're doing. Okay, awesome. Alright. I'm trying to do this one glitch in this game called QSS. Have you ever pulled that off? Is that where you go ridiculously fast by like abusing the drifting or stuff like that? Um, no, that's actually called uh, D speed and M speed. I believe D speed is the 3D, or no, that's a 2D um, like speed glitch, and then M speed is like the 3D speed glitch. But uh, QSS is to where all you have to do is just press the B button to slide and then do quick steps. And it lets you go like twice as fast what you're supposed to do. It's <laughs> so you're sliding everywhere you go. <laughs> Pretty much. It's just like <laughs> you're just holding the B button and then sliding and you go twice as fast as you would boosting. It's actually so, a so Sonic decided to sit on his butt one day and then he went <laughs> six hundred miles per hour. Yeah, dude, it's that grease. <laughs> it helps him slide all over the place even faster. Sliding around at the speed of sound. Oh no, uh Takashi Izuka was only given special thanks in level design for Sonic Unleashed. Really? See, that's what I thought. I knew he had... I knew, like, when he came back for Sonic 4 Episode 1, people were so excited about that, and just, like, made a big deal about it, so I was like, I'm pretty sure he came back then, but, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, you're, you're right. Because, well, no, because before uh, Unleashed... The last thing he did of any importance was, well, Night's Journey of Dreams. It's not even a Sonic game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, because every other, uh, until, wow, yeah, he was he was gone for a while. You're absolutely right. Sonic Adventure 2. That was the yeah, last game. Yeah. He was a director, game designer, enemy game designer, level designer for that one. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, you're right. Sonic 4 Episode 1 is when he made his return as producer. Okay, well, alright. I thought I was right, because I remember reading an interview long ago to where he was like, you know, he was glad to be back with Sonic Team, and everyone was like, oh, Sonic 4 is going to be, you know, the next Sonic 3 and Knuckles that he worked on before, but we all know that wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> but, and um, now we're Sonic the Werehog. Yep, in the Shamar Hub world. I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just kind of running around here, because I really <laughs> like to find an excuse to sit around here. Because you like the music, I exactly the music. So you know already. Yeah, if it, 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 it's one thing that I think a lot of people hold it, when it comes to their opinion, and I will uh, say again and again and again, I may not have a high opinion of the Werehog, but I love his music so much. It, like, um, and I think uh, Shamar Knight is actually my favorite Werehog theme. I agree completely. I think Shamar Knight's Hub World music is actually my favorite tune in the game because I never get tired of it. Like I love that dude playing yeah. like that saxophone. I mean, it, it just sounds so great, and uh, you know, I'm really glad to see that uh, the people who create the music in this game are actually going to be coming back for Sonic Lost World because yeah, the moment I heard Desert Ruins Act Two. Um, I was just like, okay, this Shamar. this reminds me of Shamar. <laughs> it was just like, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This is exactly what this game needs. But um, yeah. But you know what though? That also it also just just compounds the issue though with another just the, with the problems I have with the Werehog because as the viewers are well aware at this point, every time you enter a battle with the Werehog, it, the theme gets replaced with that battle theme. And the thing, the, the thing is, is that battle theme is good enough on its own, but it plays every time you encounter an enemy, and it drowns out the stage music. And yeah. I was like, no, I want to listen to this theme. Exactly. That's always been one thing that I didn't like about the battle music. It's just, it just kind of interferes way too much with, you know, the really nice music that this game has to offer. But. I don't know. So let me know. Like, tell me, what are your opinions exactly on the Werehog completely? Because I know a lot of people in the Sonic, you know, fan base seem to actually, you know, hate his gameplay and stuff like that, and just him in general. And there's some people, a very small 
amount of people, I'd probably say smaller than the fan base of Sonic 06, <laughs> that actually, um, you know, say they like the Werehog. Well, so, I've, I, I, I've met a few people that claim to like the Werehog more than Sonic's gameplay himself, and, uh, you know, that's their opinion, I, I can respect that. My problem, like, I, I am, I, I don't think, like, the, the Werehog gameplay is broken. I don't think it sucks completely, and that's not the problem I have with it. My biggest problem with it is that it is so unnecessary. Like, why is this here? Okay, so you want to win the crowd back after Sonic, the debacle that was Sonic 06. You know, everybody pretty much hated that game. It was notorious for just the amount of critical backlash it got. Okay, so you want to, you, the next Sonic game you're going to make is going to focus primarily on Sonic. Oh, but look at this. Now he's transforming into this were beast. <laughs> what do you think about that? And then the, at the moment they asked that question, they actually turned off the monitors for their Q&A testing so they wouldn't hear the answers and just assume that everyone loved it. So they wanted to go along with it, and here we are. The, but that's it. That's my biggest problem with uh, the Werehog is that it doesn't need to be here in the first place. Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel. Like, it's... Because that's the thing, you know, they were trying to extend replay value for the game by adding the Werehog, but it was completely unnecessary. I mean, to be honest, I probably would have still been happy with the game if it were just day stages and have it short, you know, like Sonic Colors and all those games. Yeah, I was just about to bring that up. It was like, hey, we wanted to add the Werehog so that the game couldn't be beaten in about two to three hours. Well, explain Sonic Colors then, sir. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. uh, Sonic Generations? Duh. Well, uh, as far as I'm aware, these are critically acclaimed. Well, I'm not gonna say critically acclaimed, but these are well-received games, aren't they, sir? Yeah. Well, then nobody cares if it's short. Exactly. That that's what I feel like. I I don't think the Werehog should get as much flack as you know a lot of people give them to where they say, "Oh my God, he's the worst gameplay ever." You know, it gets so repetitive. I mean, at times it honestly does get repetitive because I mean it's a beat 'em up brawler. That's what happens, you know, with beat 'em up brawler games. But you know. I mean, I can understand how people, you know, say that they don't think that it fits with Sonic. Because it honestly doesn't. This isn't what Sonic was, you know, supposed to be, you know. It's supposed to be platforming and speed, not him fighting all over the place. Yeah. At least in my opinion. But I can completely agree with you there. It, it kind of seems unnecessary, you know, to have this kind of gameplay just to extend replay value when this isn't what people wanted. This isn't what people asked for at all. No. I don't... I don't as far as I'm aware, I don't believe nobody asked for this, so why is it here? Exactly. Well, a, lot, a lot of people bring up the, uh, another argument that, what if it were Knuckles in this role? Well, that's the thing. Okay, if you think about it, yeah, Knuckles could have been, you know, the, the Werehog and stuff like that, because they actually were um, saying that they were going to bring Knuckles into this game, but, you know, they decided not to for some reason. I have no idea why. But... Um, you know, that's the thing. Knuckles' gameplay in, like, the adventure games has always had speed. So, I mean, that's the thing. The Werehog doesn't have speed at all. He's really slow, to be honest. Dude, by the way, I love your strategy of dealing with the fire wizard. I don't know. Use the, don't, use the, don't use the water barrels. Punch the fire <laughs> out of them. <laughs> I was trying to see if I could take him out without worrying about that, but I'm completely failing so hard. <laughs> Hey, no, you survived. So that's all that matters. Just barely. Look at that. Yeah. Living on the edge, dude. That's all. That's what I'm all about. <laughs> uh, don't, 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 don't let Sonic join the fire brigade. <laughs> yeah, dude. Water's water. water. That's nice. I'll just punch the fire out. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know why I was struggling, struggling right there so much. I've done it before, to where I just like Falcon punch those guys, and then boom, they're dead, and then just jump into the water, <laughs> save myself. Uh, if it were Knuckles in the Werehog shoes, I think that might have uh, eased the issues a, a few pe people have in general slightly. But even then, there are still the mechanics of the Werehog. There are a lot of little things that bother me about the Werehog. Is well, well, first off, the stages take forever. Like especially on your first playthrough, I think the longest I've ever spent in a Werehog stage that's not Eggman Land is probably it was probably Empire City. I spent about like 35 minutes in that level my first time. Oh yeah, because of those spiky, uh, spiky platforms to where like if you fall off them, you're dead. Yeah. Like that was always a big problem for me. Like I like the look of that stage. I think it's actually one of the prettiest stages in this game. But the problem is, is that it's just the controls and everything. That's probably my biggest problem with the Werehog, the controls. 
but um yeah they 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 try to they try to fix that with like a that, that's probably why they give you a double jump in the first place because they realize just how stiff the werehog feels when it comes to platforming uh but then you got that weird ass issue that i'm not exactly sure why it happens but there are times when you're making you're doing platforming and the werehog doesn't have a drop shadow for some reason exactly i've and, never and understood that and everybody that you know plays platforms, well, 3D platforms in particular, knows how important a drop shadow is when it comes to precise platforming because it lets you know if you're above the platform or not. Exactly, and that shadow is completely gone on Empire City. It is nowhere to be found, which is really bad considering that stage has so many areas where you can fall into a bombless pit. Yeah, it's really bad. Yeah, it's the worst with Eggman Land, in my opinion, because you got. Uh, I, uh, I haven't played Eggman Land fully since I've actually played the game for the first time in 2008. Because, what, ladies and gentlemen, when it takes you 72 minutes to beat a level, you generally don't want to ever do that level again. Yep, exactly. Uh, and I, I can't recall how many Werehog sections there were in that one, but there, you're gonna die a lot if it's your first time playing. Yep, I have. Yep, it, it was really bad. Though, uh, you've played the Wii version of the game, right? Uh, barely. I haven't... Uh, not, no, no more than like an hour. See, that's the thing. I I've played through the entire Wii version, or actually I didn't, because I couldn't bear Eggman Light. I was so sick and tired of the game. I didn't really find it fun at all. But that's the funny thing. A lot of people complain about the Werehog stages in this game being extremely long. If you play like all the stages that you have to play of the Werehog in the Wii version, it comes out to be sometimes twice as long as the Werehog stages in yeah, this game. There is, uh, from what I understand, there is more focus on the Werehog in the Wii version than there is in the HD version of Unleashed, and you know, uh, yeah, that, 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 that totally makes me want to play the game. <laughs> exactly. It, it's weird because they completely remove a daytime stage, I believe two actually, in that game, yet they overload you with so many Werehog stages, yet the Wii version got the better ratings. I, I never understood that, because uh, I played I both the games, and I found the Werehog's gameplay to be a lot more fun, you know, not as boring, um, in the 360 and PS3 versions compared to the Wii versions. Like, it, it was just really bad, in my opinion, yet that one got the higher ratings. Really weird. I think it's because, um... Because there's actually one thing I do remember when Sonic Unleashed was all the was the focus in, when, when it came to Sonic discussion, is that you know we have this new boosting. Well, it's not new. Sonic Sonic Rush did it first, but you know it's the first time we got Sonic doing that kind of stuff in a 3D game. And one thing I remember people complaining about in Unleashed is that it was actually really hard at times. You know because Sonic Unleashed requires you to do a lot of mem level memorization. Exactly. For better for better or worse. Mm -hmm. You know, so like when you lev when you memorize the levels well enough, it is extremely fun to like blast all through these stages, like taking multiple paths and trying to get those S ranks. Uh, but when it comes to just getting players into it, I think Unleashed actually does pretty bad in that regard because there is a l you got to have good qu hand to eye coordination when it comes to boosting and uh, how this game works. The Wii version, from what I've experienced and from what I've seen people play, eases players in. Uh, in a much better fashion so in a sense it's easier and I think people because of that people can enjoy it more and that's probably why it got the higher review scores hmm yeah now that you mentioned it that is a good point because I never really had too much trouble honestly on the Wii version the daytime stages around here though especially with how uh, I believe I I'm not sure correct me if I'm wrong but I believe the Wii version didn't actually put the uh, boost button and the homing attack button on the same uh, on the, as it mapped as the same button like this uh, game did. If, uh, top of my head uh, when I played the Wii version the homing attack was still mapped to the A button so it was still a uh, classic homing attack unlike this game which the homing attack is mapped to the X button Exactly. Uh, the for some odd reason. The same button as the uh, Sonic the bo boost. The boost. The air boost. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> I was just thinking whenever that was, you know, whenever they put that in the instruction manual, I was just right, like, just what gonna, were just, they just, thinking? Yeah, I'm just going to homing attack this enemy right here. Oh, now I'm in China. <laughs> <laughs> so falling off the Great Wall of China. Uh, 
But, uh, but yeah, but what, another thing that really uh, I found out about the Wii version of Unleash is that the boost was uh, broken up into segments. Like, you can get... The boost was something you only use for a few seconds, and then it just dies off automatically. And then if you want to keep going fast, you have to hit the boost button again. Unlike this game, where you can just hold down the boost continuously until the meter runs out. I never got that, and they removed that for colors, thank God. Thank God. But yeah, I agree. I always thought that was weird, considering that Dimps worked on the game. Yet, they, uh, like, Dimps worked on the game, and they completely changed the boost. I mean, what was the... I don't understand why they just didn't do, uh, why they didn't stick to, like, the Sonic Rush formula. To where you could choose whenever you wanted to boost. I think it was because it was the first 3D game... Well, first... Well, on, on both uh, ends, it's the first 3D game to utilize the boost feature, so I'm not exactly sure if they were ready to incorporate it yet. Either that or were they were nervous. Um... <laughs> But I, I, I'm not going to entirely put that blame on Dimps because, you know, Sonic Team has to direct them in some fashion and they're pretty much just doing their jobs as programmers. Yeah, I guess so, but I, from, but that's the thing, like, don't they usually, like, Sonic Team usually handles, like, HD versions of games and then they give, like, Dimps, you know, full control of the other side of the game? Yeah, Dimps usually is in charge of the handheld uh, Sonic games, and, um... You know, you know, it's the popular thing nowadays. Well, it's not just popular; it's also easy to do, to make fun of dimps when uh, a Sonic game, a handheld Sonic game, is not up to snuff with like console games. Um, but you know, I think dimps is more than capable enough of making quality Sonic titles. After all, they did make the Advance series, exactly. and you know, and I do love the Advance series. Well, not so much Advance Three, but. Um, and I do get a kick out of Sonic Rush, so I think, yeah, they're more than capable of making a quality game. Yeah, it's just that sometimes they make decisions that are... just raise more eyebrows than anything else. But, yeah, I'm not gonna say, uh, Dimps, uh, die, Dimps, die! Yeah! <laughs> you know, and I was like, no, that, that's stupid. It's like, I think they do, a jo they do the job well enough, it's just that, uh, their track record is not exactly what I would call perfect. Yeah. I think I'm gonna take your advice and actually pick up a water bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, wrong dude right there. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again here. Cause this is getting annoying. I don't know why it's acting it's so hard all of a sudden to actually no, take I, I, I specifically recall the fire wizards being the most one of the most annoying enemies in the game. Uh, besides the ones that can heal other enemies. Oh um, yeah, those guys. I'll, I always go after the wizards first because yeah. what they can do is they can either heal or they can give them double power. So like they basically give the dark guy of minions like their own unleashed mode. So, and nobody wants to hear any longer. Nobody, nobody here wants to be here any longer than they already have been. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that's the weird thing. Um, I always remember like on the Wii version, the fire wizards were like a lot more annoying. But it seems like for some reason here. They actually do take a good amount of health if you do get hit by them. But have you uh, have you played the DLC versions, uh, the DLC stages of Sonic Unleashed? I have all the DLC uh, adventure packs. Uh, I've only really gotten um, some playtime in a, a few of them. Like I played, uh, I played all the rooftop run ones. I think I've played all the uh, Empire City ones, and uh, I think I played all the um, Holosco ones. Uh, but, in but but this was around the time where uh, I didn't want to go anywhere near Shamar and Adabat. Uh, so uh, I do have those adventure packs, but I haven't uh, done much with them. Well, I've actually played Ad I actually played the Adabat adventure packs recently because uh, I'm pretty sure you're aware with uh, the Unleashed project. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I, I was uh, doing a, a set of streams to, for the Sonic Hacking Contest 2013, and one of the entry. Sonic Generations, so it was pretty much the um, Adabat Adventure Pack from Unleashed, uh, you know, brought into the Generations engine, and uh, I've played it there. But overall, yeah, I have, uh, I'm saying this while well, how <laughs> Sonic is running. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't so find any water. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, this is spicy. <laughs> My god, I am, I need to find some water fast. The thirst, the thirst is real. <laughs> Jesus, this dude won't get up! <laughs> I completely ran out of water barrels, and I have n Okay, thanks. Sonic's so dehydrated, he bursts. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, sorry about that. Continue. 
Uh, no. Uh, what we probably, we probably should do is probably grab the enemy and probably toss him at the fire wizard. Set him on fire. That's true. Oh, yeah. dang! I thought you actually had to, uh... Okay. I thought you actually had to, um... Like... Do this little move to where, you know, sometimes if you don't actually lower their, like, health or whatever... You have to, like, mash the B button multiple times, leaving you vulnerable to get attacked. Yeah. Well, either that or they're, when they're not uh, weak enough, they just retaliate and take a, a break the grip, and they, you get hurt as a result of that. I, I, refresh my memory, though. Uh, was it this game where when you're when you, when you can perform a finisher on the enemy, if you fail to hit the button prompt, they actually regain health? Yes, they regain all of their health. It's really uh, right. Okay, yeah. That's another reason why I don't like the warehouse <laughs> sections, kitties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. If you want to, uh, if you want to actually have an easier time with the quick time events, just lower their health to where they're almost about to die, and that way, uh, that way, um, the quick time event gives you more time. Because if yeah. you do it when they have a ton of health, you have to press that button pretty much in a second, yeah. or else you're going, you're going to get hit, and they're going to regenerate all of their health. I do remember that mechanic. You're right. But yeah, you were saying something about the Unleashed project. Um, well, yeah. Well, well I, I've already said more than enough because I actually had a video dedicating that in my like, and I had an entire video dedicated to that uh, mod because I love that mod so much. Uh, well, I love the efforts the team did to put that kind of stuff into the generations engine. Uh, you know, it's just sp spectacular stuff. If I'm playing daytime levels on Sonic Unleashed, not how I'm doing it. Uh, is via that mod. Oh, we actually get to listen to Shamar's night music now. I know, finally, man. <laughs> give, it, give it thirty seconds. We'll probably rent some more enemies. Yeah, and I agree. That that mod was really, really well done. I was surprised by all the work they did, especially the hub world too, and the remix music for that hub world. It was it was just like they put so much effort into it to where in parts that they didn't even have to put effort into, and that's what really impressed me in my opinion. Yeah, they they gave it a hundred and ten percent. It paid off because mm -hmm. I actually did win um when because uh, the Unleashed project was also part of the Sonic Hacking Contest 2013, and uh, I believe the Unleashed project took it, well, it took the big trophy uh, of that contest. So yeah, congrats, guys. So. Awesome. Yeah, I, I actually did not follow that. So, but um, that's actually really good. It was definitely well deserved. Because I remember uh, when I was actually following it. Um, I was following it uh, when they were showing off like how they were trying to port, uh, I believe, Missouri. I believe that was the first stage they were trying to port. Something like that. I believe so, yeah. And, uh, you know, it took them like probably, I think, like six to nine months, something like that. It took a really long time, so. I have no idea where I'm going. I'm looking for. There it is! What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> it blended right in with the water. Like, where the heck is this last key? There we go, though. I always seem to have trouble on the stage too. This is like the only Werehog stage I seem to have trouble on. But um, yeah, usually I try to come over this way to go get the uh, medals, but it's pretty much almost signed your death wish if you're not good with this. Did you usually come to this section up here? Uh, well, well, I generally didn't like. Well, unless it was absolutely necessary to unlock new stages, because another thing Unleash does. You have to collect a certain amount of medals in order to advance the plot. Uh, I generally did not want to explore that much with the Werehog because I wasn't fond of it to begin with, so my consensus was get it done with as soon as possible. I pretty much did all of my metal hunting with daytime stages, which is not exactly easy in itself either because you have to know the multiple pathways like the back of your hand. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god! Holy crap, what the heck? I pressed these buttons. <laughs> I thought I had it right there. Dang. Yes. Put See him on the ground and stomp on his face. What the heck? I actually <laughs> died. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a moment. Oh my god! Do I have to redo? The I have to. Redo no, no. This you just got a checkpoint. I n no. This oh, was a while back. I have to redo oh. this entire set. I could have sworn. Oh, you. Why didn't you go through the checkpoint first before you went to the multiple pathway? I. <laughs> now I'm on fire. Districts <laughs> 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 <Just> everywhere. <laughs> Throw a I... barrel. I don't even know why I didn't do that. What was I thinking? Wow. Well, there we go. I had a dirt well, you should actually. Well, you know, you're more, you're more prepared this time. You're looking. You just dealt with that wizard. <laughs> <laughs> dealt with it. Didn't lose almost half my gauge. Yeah. Oh my god. But um. Yeah, I don't know what. Like, I just got smoked right there. It was like, first that dude did that ginormous like 
arm attack, and then next thing you know, just got penetrated by that bee stinger. What are your, uh, when it comes to playing as the Warhog, though, like, do you have a particular combo that you like to do, or? Um, I actually like to, what the heck, I think I entirely missed that. Um, I like to do the, uh, spinning needle attack. You see that move right there, to where you can just basically plow through enemies? Yeah, the drill dash, pretty it, much. It is very, very useful to, for just clearing out an entire, you know, set of enemies around you and just yeah. knocking them off their feet. Yeah, when I was uh, playing the game for the first time, I didn't really use that one that much because, uh, to me, when it came to beat em ups, the one that did the most hits was generally the one I liked to do the most. It wasn't exactly the one the one move that does a lot of power in in comparison to the one that does a lot of hits. So I would do I would often do the combos where uh, where uh, Sonic would follow up by like, you know, banging the invisible drums. Yes, or, that's the Warehammer move, I believe. I believe that's what it's called. Or does it, he has a similar one that, where he's pretty much doing that with his feet instead of his arms. And I like doing those because it it was it had a lot of range and it wasn't very strong, but you know it took care of a lot of baddies at once. And that's generally what I was going for. But nowadays, uh, those very rare instances where I'm recording a Werehog stage for like like a Sonic video, um, I, I generally do the drill dash myself too. So yeah, I do agree that's a pretty powerful move. Mm -hmm. Freaking bees, man. I hate these things. <laughs> there nobody like bees. These are, without a doubt, I think actually the most annoying enemies in this game because they can easily dodge your attacks. And then not only that, their attacks are really, really strong. There we go. One hit and knock out that dude. Oh, yeah. We didn't even try to dodge. <laughs> <laughs> he was just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But yeah. The stage, though, I'm s I I can't believe I've di I died there because that's the first time I've actually died on the Warehog stage in so long. Oh, you're you're welcome. Yeah, thanks. You're ba you're bad luck. You bring the <laughs> Let's Play curse upon me. <laughs> Don't look out the window now, but there's a meteor heading towards your house. I should have known. I think you brought the same. You brought the same. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, bad outcomes or like whatever on me with the Sonic an Chronicles open? video. It's, it's an omen. <laughs> Not appropriate too. We're about to start October, so. Oh yeah. Well, at the time it's recording anyway. Mm -hmm. I think this may be the last video you'll be in, Johnny. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can say your prayers. <laughs> Can't have you making me look like a terrible Sonic gamer. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah. Um, what is actually uh, your favorite stage in this game besides Spagonia, if that is your favorite stage? Oh, besides Rooftop Run, which is pretty much everyone's pick. Yes. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, daytime stages. Well, yeah, daytime stages. I don't like anything about the Warhog. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Spagonia is generally the top pick. But if I could pick another one, actually, it'd probably be Empire City. Really, uh, Empire City yeah. gay? Yeah. Hmm. There's just something about like I don't want to say I don't want to say um what's the name of the first stage Apatos or something like that yeah Apatos Apatos I don't want to say that because it's so damn easy and it's the first stage you know everybody can say they love that because it's so easy to go through um so, so that's that's generally why I don't usually pick that one and Spagonia speaks for itself uh but it doesn't really have that much of a challenge to it I don't think because you're pretty much just like running really fast and taking all the multiple pathways in about four minutes time. Uh, but when it comes to the right amount of challenge and speed and platforming, I think Empire City is my favorite when it comes to that. Okay. Uh, see, that's the thing. Like, Empire City, I have I used to find it difficult, but if you actually know the shortcuts... Oh, let me get that checkpoint, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a sec. That door closes. That door closes? I just remembered. That's why I didn't go. It closes behind you. Uh, you're gonna have to wing it. Don't, 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 don't. I'm don't trying to see. I'm <laughs> that door closes that you might have to backtrack in a later session to get those medals. Oh god, I think I may do that though <laughs> because I don't want to <laughs> end up dying again. That's the thing. I think it closes behind you. Let me see. Well, it just, it just closes right. behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. Thanks, Sonic Team. It's just one way of masking low times. Ah, oh, my god. That's such bull, man. Like, I want to actually go get the challenge, but they don't. They they want you to go the ballsy way. They don't want you to be pulling those checkpoints. That's so annoying. Oh wow. Okay. Well, 
we are actually about to run into an enemy right here that did not make it into the other stages, but is actually based off the Iblis monsters. Remember these guys, is this the Is this the only time that this creature shows up? It actually is. Shamar is the only stage that these guys show up. Huh. Did yeah, you you're right, though. I do definitely see the parallels to the Iblis swarms. Yeah, um, because um, that's the funny thing. Uh, a lot of the enemies in the uh, beta, if you actually go look at, um, I believe it was the... Uh, what stage was it? I'm trying to recall. Um, if you actually look at Windmill Knight, um, like the, f the really like early builds of it, you can see those enemies are all in Windmill Isle, and uh, they look very... They look even closer to the uh, Iblis Worms in that game. Mm. Yeah, there might have been inspiration, definitely. I have no idea why they removed them, though. I don't even think they show up in the DLC stages. I don't think anybody was from Minor Sonic 06. I think that's why. That's probably what it is. <laughs> <laughs> But um, if you actually, that's a, f a funny thing here, if you actually touch that treasure chest in there, it yeah. for some reason actually makes enemies come out. No idea why. It's their box, they're protecting it. I know, it's probably, uh, what is it? Like releasing the uh, genie from Sonic, um, Sonic and the Secret Rings? So, yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna be, there we go. See there, Johnny? You can take him out without using the barrels. I'd rather not punch fire. <laughs> You're sending a bad message to the kids. That is true. I should think yeah. about the kids. Fire in the house? Punch it. <laughs> kids, don't try this at home. Please don't. <laughs> I'm not reliable for. I'm, I'm not reliable for any of all this. No, you're, 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 reliable. I mean, I said <laughs> reliable. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh whoa! I just realized there was some metal right there. Almost missed that. In the darkest corners of the stage. Yeah. It's generally where you want to look at when it comes to collecting metals in the warehouse stages. If, if you think something might be there, it's going to be there. So just go. Yeah, it's so weird. Like, you think that the metals... Like, sometimes actually metals are, like, right in your face. I'll, I think there's one area, like in Chunan Night, to where there are, like, three metals in pretty much one area. And they're <laughs> all just sitting right there, but most people miss them. So that, that's probably why. It's an area that's hard to get to or... Uh, an area that's so hidden that the developers feel like they need to reward you with three medals for saying, oh, congratulations, but you still got like 300 more medals to get. <laughs> yeah. And then, once again, we see another flaw of the Werehog with the no drop shadow, because I completely missed that medal up there. I was trying to get that moon medal, but could not see where I was landing. Alright, so I think we actually have to drag this over this way. Yeah, I noticed that the Warehog stages don't have the timer anywhere on the screen. I see what you did there, Sonic Team. <laughs> they don't—they don't want you to know how long you've been wasting time <laughs> on these stages, dude. All right. Yeah, I—I I probably have to say Shamar is my least favorite stage in this game. Yeah, it, it, it's a shame too because I really do. But again, I'll say it for a third time. I love the stage music. I love Shamar Knight so much. It was actually the, uh, the first thing that came to mind when I, I was actually when I was in the Art Institute uh, from uh, 2008 to 2011, and when I had to make my first game uh, with uh, using Action Script and Adobe Flash uh, CS3, uh, I wanted to make mine a semi-platformer-like kind of game, which it doesn't exist anymore. Don't ask for it. And the first thing that came to mind when I wanted to it, uh, bring music into the level was Shamar Knight because I love this song so damn much. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like this game, uh, this stage has probably some of the, like, the best, uh, like, this stage, like, the hub world has probably some of the best music, but the stage is suck, in my opinion. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of a shame, honestly. Oh, what the heck? That dude just, like, smoked me right there. Oh, God. <laughs> I always forget about this section being like so difficult right here. You gotta take out those wizards or else. Yeah, get the rid of the wizards first, otherwise the the damn uh, whatever. Titan will do like the, double the, damage. Yeah. But hey, at least he actually knocks out uh, what is it? His helper, so it's not yeah, too bad. Yeah, because that's another thing though. With like one thing, that, one annoying thing that can happen when it comes to those guys is that Sonic can get actually get stunlocked 
with the um, with the shock waves because when, if Sonic manages to get hit with the shock wave, he'll land on the floor. But you got to mash the buttons to recover. And if you're not fast, uh, the, the the Titan usually follows up with another shock wave after doing that. And Sonic will just constantly get hit with the shock wave over and over again yeah. to the point where you're stuck. And that is really annoying. I agree completely. It gets really bad. Okay, I'm gonna try and see if I can actually. Oh god. Oh god! <laughs> he was almost about to get me right there. I'm trying to see if I can whittle his gauge right here. Okay, here we go. Let's do a quick time event. Let's go. Oh god. Whoa! Thank goodness. Can I answer your door? <laughs> With all the ring ding dings? Yeah, that's what I think. I was like, is someone at the door? <laughs> Okay, now one thing, I don't know if you actually knew this, but if you actually know how to do the XYY uh, wall glitch move right here, you can actually glitch into a beta area of this stage right here. Really? Yes, and behind this door, there's actually a sun medal. A play is it? programmed and everything or no uh that's the thing there is a sun medal that you're not supposed to collect that's not part of the stage so see right here this game has uh 10 sun medals you can actually find the 11th elusive sun medal behind this wall oh. see right there look at that there's like it there's an entry over there that you can yeah you're, de to. you're definitely actually you know what i think i may have recalled doing this myself because i think i was when i was fighting enemies i was double jumping at the point and i saw that level behind the door and I, I think I might have spent like a few seconds wondering, all right, how do I get this door open? But then I realized, eh, it's probably nothing to worry about. And I just ended up, at that point, I think I was already like 30 minutes into the level. So I just wanted to get the level done and over with. Yep. You basically uh, yeah, have, to pull the, right. uh, you have to pull the glitch through the wall silver trick. <laughs> oh, well, we, we need some gun boxes. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. Some psychokinesis. Yeah, actually, let's, let's get some barrels right here. Let's go. <laughs> 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 That's the funny thing, though, because this is exactly in like the same like setting and all that stuff, and you can glitch through the wall just like silver if you know how to. But there we go, and even with that death, we still got an A rank, surprisingly. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. It was probably twenty-eight minutes A rank. Oh man, <laughs> they really do it. They really did expect you to take forever in this stage. They really did. I remember when I actually went against uh, those enemies back there. It took me thirty-five minutes to beat this stage. So they, it's really, really long. Actually, you know what? I I think after playing that stage, I need to upgrade my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I really need to upgrade. Like get some bandages for your fists, man. You probably have like <laughs> 67 third degree birds. Yeah, big time. I ca I can't believe though I had that much trouble on that stage though. Kind of weird. Have you ever maxed out all of your stats? Yes, I did, but I did, did that. You, did you use Did you use the Wentos trick? The Wentos trick. Yeah, the Wentos trick. If it's um, I believe it. it it's been a while since I did it, but uh, you know, you're you're well, you're you're well aware of our Wentos, right? The one that the traveling salesman. Yes. Uh, I think if you buy certain items for him at a discounted price, you can actually sell him, ba sell it back to him for more than what you paid for it. So you can like use that to buy a lot of food items uh, that give Sonic experience when you eat it, and oh, you, can yeah. max out, you can max out your experience gauge doing that. That's how I did it for uh, my file. So yeah, I'm pretty much I got a pimped out warehog. <laughs> Still doesn't want to go anywhere near Eggman Land. Still doesn't want to go anywhere near Eggman Land. That's good though that you actually max them out, because if you play on the DLC stages, a maxed out Werehog is like you're starting from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, yeah, so we've been recording for like 40 minutes, so I might as well go ahead and end this off right here. But uh, yeah, so is there anything you would like to say, Johnny, before um, we end off this video? See if you can jump on that torch and set yourself on fire. <laughs> just as a little. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, no, it was like, yeah, this is this is safe fire, unfortunately. Uh, well, well, if uh, if any of you guys are interested, you can check me out at youtubecom Johnny, where I'm currently. Well, at probably the time I don't know when you're going to upload this. I am currently in the middle of a Mega Man marathon, and I have some videos planned for the month of October. So I hope you guys stay tuned for that. But Kobe, thank you for letting me join on this arduous journey through, through <laughs> Shaman. <laughs> no problem, dude. Really glad to have you, and uh, you know it's such a treat to have you once again in one of my videos.
Yeah, no, no problem, dude. But yeah, so I guess that wraps it up. Make sure to go check out his channel, Some Call Me Johnny, SGB Likes to Play, and Brain Scratch Comms. But yeah, this is Kobanermani456, and I will see you all later. Peace! <laughs>